Okay, we're ready. Okay, we'll uh, reconvene uh, this meeting to public session and roll call. Everybody is present. And public comments. The announcement pursuant to board policy number 2350, public comment may be limited to three minutes per person or 30 minutes per topic. All speakers who would like to comment regarding a matter on the meeting agenda must submit a public comment card to the board president or recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting at which the agenda item is called. All speakers who would like to comment regarding a matter not on the meeting agenda must submit a public comment card to the board president or recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting for open forum on non-agenda items. Public comment cards are available at the information table at the rear of the boardroom from the recording secretary or online. And uh, we ask all speakers to come to the podium to address the board. Okay, pledge allegiance. Ms. Gaines, you wanna lead us? Right hand over your heart, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Okay, item 9.1, the approval of the meeting uh, public meeting agenda. Do we have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, passes unanimously. Okay, open forum on non-agenda items. And I think we have one, Jason Bowen. We got three, okay, Jason Bowen. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, I have uh, what I'd like to do is share remarks provided by Kirk Vishengrad. <clears throat> Upon learning about the ABC employee coronavirus impact stipend, I wonder if the powerful decision makers at ABC consider adjuncts, professors a vital part of the college, it is stunningly insulting to offer part-time educators who make up approximately 70% or more of the teaching faculty half the stipend amount than their full-time colleagues. Are we only half as important? Perhaps if every adjunct just dropped their pencils and walked out of their classrooms at a given time, the powers that be will quickly learn how essential we are to the operation and success of this institution. It takes all the cogs of a machine for it to run well. He capitalized that. As soon as certain cogs are treated less than the others, the machine's operation suffers. The pandemic hit every single employee at ABC. We were all forced to pivot at a moment's notice to online teaching. However, adjuncts or hourly employees compensated chiefly for only the time spent in the classroom, therefore all the time adapting to remote teaching, all the money spent on necessary home equipment, all the effort to train, repurpose, and serve as a counselor, therapist, cheerleader, social worker, doctor, teacher, to our students came from our own pockets. All the while adjuncts were dealing with the same emotional, physical, psychological turmoil as full-time faculty and administrators. With our low income wages and additional pandemic related expenses, we still had to worry about getting sick. Of course, we don't get health benefits like full-time employees. Navigating disease and death within our families and somehow provide a beacon of light and purpose for our students. Adjuncts rise to the occasion for our students who have no idea we work on such a dramatically unlevel playing field. Yet certain persons, perhaps unaware of the sacrifices that adjuncts make each and every day without job security or financial compensation or basic acknowledgement from administration have decided all the part-time professors are not worthy of equal compensation. The blatant disregard for the adjunct faculty stings like a slap to the face. It is very clear that we are second-class citizens on this campus. Our work time and effort mean nothing to the administrators who make this decision that flagrantly conveys a message of inequity and gratitude and inferiority. Like many part-time faculty, I live in Los Angeles, meaning my commute is over 120 miles round trip. That this news should come at a time when gas prices are making commutes financially devastating only augments the insensitivity of the decision. In addition elsewhere, including at Ventura County Community College District, all faculty and staff receive equal COVID stipend amounts from the district. Let me be clear, 
I am thankful for any compensation. In light of current events in a world gone mad, I'm glad to have a job that I love where I make a difference, however grateful I may be. I also know injustice when I see it. We teach our students to speak out against discrimination, inequality, and unfair practices. The pandemic affected me just as much as anyone else on this campus. I pivoted, adapted, and adjusted in my work just as much as anyone else on this campus. I deserve the same respect and regard as much as anyone else on this campus. Thank you for listening. Kirk Vishengrad, Professor of Theater Adjunct, Antelope Valley College. Thank you. Thank you. Eugene Hernandez. Eugene Hernandez, Antelope Valley Green Party. Uh, this is my diploma from this college, 1998. At that time, I was very satisfied with the teachers, with the courses and, and the instruction. But now when I read the Antelope Valley Press, just the opposite occurs. I'm ashamed of this college. You're selling off the college bit by bit. You're selling out the bookstore, you're selling out the cafeteria, and you know what happens when private enterprises take over. They cut to the bottom line. This is a, a, an outrage. And the fact that you have so many interim instructors instead of hiring full-time permanent instructors shows that Mr. Newton and the board are missing both. You, you're not conducting this college as it should be. Pretty soon you'll be making this a private college. I'm surprised that the unions in this college do not uh, uh, protest what you've been doing. Spending half a million dollars on legal fees when you have an in-house lawyer, that's ridiculous. They should have went to scholarships for kids. They should have went to reducing the prices of books for kids. Instead, you're making a mockery of public education. You're not taking seriously the office that you ran for to make this a better institution. I have read the history of this college when it was established, I think in 1929, there was only 13 students. And then there was only 13 students in 1949 after World War II. What are you doing to this college? It makes me ashamed that my grandkids will be attending this college and it'll be mm -hmm. dwindled down to nothing. About you should take your public mm -hmm. responsibility. Minutia. And another thing, you have here, on the agenda that people who speak mm -hmm. should speak and then leave the room. That is a, a Brown Act violation. You should now tell the public to leave the room after public comments. I will make a protest to this, to the, the Brown Act. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Cindy Hendricks. Good evening, President Knutson and members of the board. Uh, I'm Cindy Hendricks, math faculty. Um, last week, we received an email that there was some sort of threat on campus, but it was not deemed to be legitimate. I'm really concerned about a couple of things. First of all, how long did it take to make this determination? And who decided it wasn't legitimate? What was happening on campus during the time when this decision was being made? I was wondering why there was not at least a shelter in place order or some other action taken to ensure the safety of the campus. In the past, both here at AVC and at, the, at other local schools, even a disturbance off campus often causes school authorities to lock down campuses and keep students inside for an, over an abundance of caution to make sure all the members on campus are safe. If the threat was serious enough, if the threat made was serious enough to be announced to the campus, even after the fact, it seems like some sort of action should have been taken while the risk assessment was being made to ensure the safety of all members of the ABC community. Thank you. Okay, moving along to 11.1, report of closed session action. The board took two actions on a motion by made by Mr. Adams and second by Ms. Gaines with a 4-0 vote and Mr. Reeves abstaining. The board approved the land acquisition, the opening of escrow and designating Ed Knusen 
superintendent president the authority to sign all documents related to the following vacant land and APN 3153-020-021, APN 3153-021-003, APN 3153-021-027, APN 3153-021-028, APN 3153-021-031. And APN 3153-021-037. Okay. In another separate action, the on a motion made by Mr. Adams, a second by Ms. Harvey, with a 5-0 vote, the board approved the public employment contract for Bridget Cook for the position of general counsel from April 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2025. And moving along to the consent calendar. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. President. I want to show a stop point please. Okay. Twelve point eight, please. Okay. So we have a motion to for 12.1 to 12.8, 12.14, with 12.8 pulled off the uh, agenda. Is that good for the motion and the second? Okay, I'll take this and then we'll discuss the other. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Oh, I approve. Yeah, I approve. Get me backwards. Here. Okay, so it passes unanimously with advice. Okay, item 12.8, Mr. Reeves. Yes, Mr. Vice President. Uh, we're you know, back, to the, back to the bookstore again. Yes, sir. Um, are we making profit now without government funds or what's going on now? So the bookstore has been outsourced and uh, Barnes & Noble is... Uh, abiding by the agreement, 7% of all um, merchandise, and there's um, specific merchandise that's gross sales of general merchandise, they are giving back to the district in the form of a scholarship that's a part of the agreement, they are abiding by that. So we are not making any net profit, but we're also not incurring any loss there. Okay. Um, what is the length of the contract for Barnes & Noble to run the bookstore? It runs through uh, June 30th, 2024. Okay, fine. Um, can that be modified? If both parties agree, it can, and there are two successive one-year extensions available also. Right. On top uh, of that. I was, uh, you know, I've mentioned this before that I would want to make, try to make that bookstore a community bookstore in addition to a college bookstore. Is is that something you've heard of being done in any of the other bookstores? No, the agreement, sir, is with um, Barnes & Noble College Booksellers. Oh, okay. And I believe that's a separate entity from Barnes & Noble Booksellers. Okay. It might be a subsidiary. Okay. Um, so there would be challenges because of that. Okay, well, that clears that up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, item 12.8, do we have a motion? Second. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes on a 5 0 vote. Okay, moving along to action items. Item 13.1, approval of re resolution number 21 22 slash 15, ordering governing board member election. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Item 13.2, I believe we have some speakers. Right. Kathy Osborne.
I cede my time to Aurora Bird. Since you see me in time. Hi, everyone. So I'd like to state that the items in 13.2 should not be on the board agenda right now. There's a couple of reasons. It's a little complicated. There's three reasons why not. Um, so I ask for a little bit of extra time, although thank you to Kathy for hopefully giving me an extra couple minutes here. First of all, AVC appears to be in violation of AP 2510. AP 2510 covers participation in local decision-making, in particular, the workings of the College Coordinating Council and other participatory governance committees, and in this case, the calendar committee. It covers timelines from appendix one. Each committee will also distribute to members and post a draft of unapproved minutes within 10 working days after a meeting. Minutes will include a brief summary of discussion regarding actions taken, including motions made, seconded, passed, or defeated. The calendar committee last met on November 3rd, 2021. After that meeting, no draft minutes were ever posted. In fact, it appears that following the previous meeting on October 6th, the minutes were not circulated until November 1st, 2021. The calendar committee website is also out of date and I can show you screenshots from that. For this reason, the calendar committee is failing to follow AP 2510. College committees need to follow the administrative procedures of the college. Thus, these items should not be coming forward from calendar committee to the board of trustees until the college is until the committee is in compliance with college procedures. Additionally, I've reviewed what actually happened during this meeting on November 3rd. We don't have draft minutes, but I reviewed my notes. While Juneteenth for 21-22 and 22-23 was on the agenda in response to its June 2021 designation as a new federal holiday, at the previous meeting on October 6, 2021, it was agreed to seek feedback from constituents for the date of observation for the summer 2022 Juneteenth holiday as the actual day is a Sunday, so the calendar committee needed to make a recommendation for observance on either the Friday preceding or the Monday following. Accordingly, I did seek such feedback and I brought it to the November 3rd meeting. Importantly though, I'd only sought feedback from my constituents for the summer 2022 holiday. My notes reflect that I requested we not vote on the summer 2023 holiday. Um, and I intended to go back to constituents for summer 2023 feedback. It seemed reasonable that waiting for an additional meeting um, to get constituent feedback would be helpful. And there is also the ongoing curb matter between the Federation and the district. So maybe that would be resolved prior as well. At the November 3rd meeting after spirited but collegial discussion, including from Dr. Jason Bowen, who is president, who is present as academic Senate president Van Ryder's proxy and AVC FCE president Pam, Pamela Ford, Am I out of time? Oh, okay. Regarding how to best honor not just the letter of the holiday, but the spirit of it, Dr. Vines noted that there was consensus to make a recommendation for summer 2022 only, and that it was agreed to put forth this holiday on Monday, June 20th, 2022. I requested and received verbal agreement from Dr. Vines to have the following phrase added to the minutes, quote, the faculty union request minutes reflect that our vote for Monday is solely for purposes of adding the mandatory holiday, not to be construed as union approval of the overall academic calendar for 21-22. Crucially, my notes reflect that no vote was taken on the 22-23 Juneteenth holiday. I realize I am working from my personal notes, not the minutes. If AP 2510 had been followed, this wouldn't be an issue. However, I do have corroborating evidence um, in the form of an email from November 16th from then VP of Student Services, Dr. Aaron Vines, who emailed President Knudsen a memo entitled Juneteenth 21-22 Academic Year. The memo contained the following sentences and no other information. The calendar committee convened on November 3rd, 2021 to discuss what date to recommend that we observe Juneteenth. The committee recommended that we observe Juneteenth on Monday, June 20, 2022. Um, there's a couple more sentences, but it's all about 2022. Based on this, I strongly believe that the calendar committee took no action on the 22-23 Juneteenth observance for summer 23. 
Its presence here on the agenda tonight thus reflects that the calendar committee is meaningless and the participatory governance is not a concern here. Finally, Article 10, Section 12.1 of our CBA um, states that all issues related to the calendar, um, dot, 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 holidays, skipping a few other things, shall be referred to the calendar committee. Um, and then it goes on to state that the committee shall recommend a calendar to the presidents of district and both unions for final approval through an MOU. Um, it appears to me that bringing forward to the AVC Board of Trustees a change to the 2022-2023 calendar without approval from the calendar committee and without recommendation to the Federation for final approval through an MOU for either calendar is a violation of the CBA. In closing, these items, especially the 22-23 calendar should not be on this meeting because not only was the calendar never approved by the calendar committee, the calendar committee itself is in violation of AP 2510. The presence of these calendars here tonight reflects the district's intent to completely ignore our CBA. I ask that you pull these items from the agenda until the participatory governance process can occur properly and AP 2510 and applicable CBA can be followed. Thank you. Mr. President. Yes. Request that we pull that item and we'll clarify it and clean it up. Okay. We will pull item 13.2. I believe um, Ms. Ford, do you want to speak? I just, I just wanted to say I agree with, I concur with Aurora, and I'm only speaking on behalf of the approval of the 22-23 calendar to confirm that committee only addressed the 2021 calendar, did not address 22-23. Dr. Vine sent this email to the president, and then he was gone. So um, I have this email for you. That's all, thank you. Okay, okay we pulled uh, item 13.2 for clarification. And this is for, okay, moving on to item 13.3, approval of confidential management and supervisor salary table to include a doctorate stipend, Ms. Ford. I'm addressing agenda item 13.3. He who passively accepts evil is as much involved in it as he who helps to perpetrate it. He who accepts evil without protesting against it is really cooperating with it. That was Dr. Martin Luther King. I am questioning the salaries increase without all processes being followed. Why is the district moving forward with increasing salary schedules for CMS and administrators without providing the campus feedback as required by AP 3100? The president has not provided a report out regarding campus feedback. It is as if the district can ignore whatever policy does not suit their needs and they have you as a board more than passively providing your unending support even if it places us on the fringes of accreditation. That said, I question why the PERB charge has not been satisfied. And I sincerely hope with the free flowing funds to administrators and CMS salaries, without question on your part as board of trustees, that there will be no issues with classified and faculty salaries being negotiated. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, hey, item 13.3, do we have a motion? So moved. We have a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that passes unanimously. Okay, item 13.4, approval of the associate. 
Student uh, Organization 2022-23 budget. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 13.5, approval of contract with ultimate exposure for photographic uh, services for commencement being held on May 4th and May 6th, 2022. Do we have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 13.6, and I believe Ms. Ford. Now I have to say, this one truly surprised me. The parking increase proposal. If I recall correctly, the campus was closed for the better part of two years. And as a result of the shutdown, we now have fewer students. So I have to ask, is this truly the time to increase parking fees? There was a statement included in the proposal package that said, this makes a great time to increase parking fees. Seriously? We have six proposals just tonight for campus enrollment campaigns. And I have to ask again, in trying to attract students, is this really the perfect time to increase parking fees when we are trying to attract students and increase enrollment? Not to mention, no parking lot is full, even with construction blocking off portions of the parking lots. Is this parking fee increase a part of funding that recruitment or enhancing services for our students? If so, what percentage of parking fees goes directly to our students and our student organization? Can we have this information presented at the next board meeting? Thank you. Item 13.6, do we have a motion? So moved. You have a second? Okay. Any further discussion? Yes, Mr. President, I'd like to know what uh, what the specifics of this parking increase is. Does uh, anybody in the audience know how much it's going to be increased? Tammy, please. I'm sorry, what was the question? Uh, so uh, how much are we going to increase the parking? Um, we're going to change the parking from $1.25 per week to $1.75 per week. So for a 16-week session, it goes from $20 uh, to $28 for a 16-week section. Uh, this rate is still go? well below all of our uh, Southern California competitive colleges. Um, before the increase, we were uh, 50 to 64 percent any colleges uh, in our area. And, uh, and with this new rate, we're still below uh, the average cost of Southern California colleges. Now, do we have to increase this fee because we have people monitoring the parking lots and we have to pay them more or why? Or just to be going along with everybody else? What, what well, yeah, we do, why well, are we doing it? Uh, well, we do it to, to help offset, yes, the security that we have, the improvements to the uh, parking lots and so forth. Um, you know, all costs go up every single year. Uh, for each portion of those, and we're just trying to um, adjust our revenue to meet some of those costs. Well, can you show where your costs have gone up that it's necessary to do this? Um, I have, so I can, I can get that information. I mean, we, um, I have something, uh, do I have something? And we do, uh, we do provide um, income to um, our students through ASO. 650 of every um, permit goes to ASO. $6.50 for every parking permit sold. Okay. I'm sorry, I don't have the, um, the actual costs that we had in the previous. I only had the, um, what we did in collections, mm -hmm. um, but I can tell you our security 
uh, is over a million dollars a year just for the share of security. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have quotes for what the upcoming parking lot um, improvements, you know, taking care of all the cracks and repaving uh, and lining the new parking lots. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Okay, we have one, one no vote for the advice as well. Okay, item 13.7, approval of agreement between Around AV Transit Media and Anna Valley Community College for bus wrap advertising for summer fall 2022 enrollment campaign. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 13.8, approval of contract with High Desert Broadcasting and Elm Valley Community College for summer, fall 2022 enrollment campaign. Do we have a motion? Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Item 13.9, approval of agreement between iHeart Media and Ella Valley Community College for summer, fall 2022 enrollment campaign. Is second. there a motion? Okay, is there a second? Yes, I'm Mr. President. Is that a second? Uh, a second, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, any discussion? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Reeves. Um, I understand in addition to the media advertising, we're gonna have a few supplements in the Antelope Valley Press, which I think is really good. You know, I'm a founder of a newspaper in Los Angeles. It's called the Canyon News. It's published weekly in Los Angeles in the fanciest, richest neighborhoods in town. So I know a little bit about newspapers. I haven't been affiliated with it for a dozen years, but I found that it named it, got it started. And newspapers are indispensable in disseminating information. And it pleases me to learn that the college will have some advertising in the local press, print press, to encourage enrollment in the future. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Okay, any other comments? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Passes Aye. unanimously. Okay. 13.11, 10. Approval of contract between Lamar Advertising, it's a billboard company, correct? And Animal Valley Community College for summer, fall 22, 2022 enrollment campaign. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, item. Yeah, 13.11. Approval of contract with Pandora and Alabama Valley Community College for summer, fall 2022 enrollment campaign. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, item 13.12. Approval of contract with Spectrum Reach and Animal Valley Community College for summer, fall 2022 enrollment campaign. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 13.3, approval to enter into negotiations with County of Los Angeles to repurpose Challenger Memorial Youth Center. Is there a motion? So, so moved. moved. Second. Let me go second. Okay, any discussion? Yes, Mr. President. If there's anyone that would speak on this, please. There's a couple, what are your questions? Well, one of the, uh, is it gonna be residential facility? Yes, it will in the County of Los Angeles, we'll build it. And um, are they going to pay us to educate the students? They're going to, we're entering into a contract to provide services and residential services, yes. 
And approximately how many people will go there? 150 students that have termed out of foster youth or juvenile detentions. And it's not a uh, juvenile court facility. So. No, it's not. No, it, that's what the repurpose is. They're oh, changing it. So before to an, it was juvenile court. It's going to be an educational and training facility. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, item 13.14, approval of destruction of documents, class two, optional, class three, disposable. Do we have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Yes, I have a question. Um, I wanted to know some of the documents as I look are from 2020. Um, is there not any rules uh, about how long you keep certain documents, files, or is this optional so we can choose to do this? We can choose to do it. Certain categories of documents we have to preserve in perpetuity. Uh -huh. For instance, board minutes have to be preserved forever. Certain human resource records have to be preserved for a long time. If it's optional, we can dispose of them after the useful time has run out. Mm -hmm. Okay, and is this so that you don't incur storage costs? Well, storage is part of it, yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item 13.15 approval of memorandum of understanding between Acton Aquadelsi Unified School District for Vasquez High School and Alla Valley Community College for dual enrollment. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 13.16, approval of memorandum of understanding between BART, Altadonna Community Health Center and Alla Valley College to collaborate to assisting students with medical and mental needs. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay, so second? Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. President, I have to abstain from this. Okay, Mr. Reeves will abstain. I would just uh, like to say in the discussion that making sure that um, our students have uh, access to medical and mental health uh, services is extremely important. Um, so I just wanted to say that. Okay. Any other comments? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, passes unanimously. Okay, item 13.17, approval of California Multiple Award Schedule CMAS Agreement 4-18-78-0032B with Deer and Company for the, re for the purchase of utility vehicles and related accessories through August 31, 2026. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Item 13.18, approval to utilize cooperative contract held by T2 Systems Incorporated for the district's parking management systems needs. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. President. What is this about? These people provide the parking meters in the parking lots. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, item 13.19, approval of insurance program coverage, final cost for statewide educational Wrap-up program for campus infrastructure project 17-029 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 13.20, approval of insurance program, coverage extension proposal and statewide educational wrap-up program for student services project 17-037 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Item 13.21, approval of amendment number one with McGrath Rent Corp DBA Mobile Modular Management Corporation for Swing Space 2, project 18-011 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 13.22. Approval of change orders for Sage Hall 17-031 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Uh, 13.23, correction to approval of change order for Discovery Lab 17-039 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? second? Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 13.24, approval of change order for Swing Space 2 project 18-011 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 13.25, approval of project assignment amendment to Bonder Solari Incorporated, Sage Hall project 17-031 with may, may measure AV funds. And is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 13.26, approval of project assignment Amendment for to Hewitt Zollers for architectural service services for Marauder Complex 17-041 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Okay. Any discussion? Yes. Uh, okay. I'm wondering on these approval of project assignment, why the amount is not listed uh, when we approve it. Honor Shami, please. The amount is on the agreement. It should be in there. It's an extension to go to to July of last year, uh, because that it extended past the time period of the construction, and so we okayed to pay the architect the additional fees because of the time frame, That brings us up to current time. Uh, from July to there, they haven't charged us anything because we haven't moved forward on anything yet. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, 13.27, approval of project assignment amendment to IMEG Corporation for Land Survey Services, General Conditions 17-042 with Measure AV Funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 13.28, approval of project assignment amendment to Ledesma and Meyer Construction Company for, con for Construction Management Services, Swing Space, to project 18-011 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 13.29, approval of project assignment amendment to HMC Architects for architectural and engineering services, Cedar Hall project, 18-021 with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay, is there a second? Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 13.30, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Sage Hall project 17-03 run for Donald M. Hoover Company. Hoover flooring with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, advice. I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Okay, item 13.31, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Sage Hall project 17-031 for DTS company with measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, Mr. President. Um, we've been through this before. Uh, you know, we have all Sage Hall. And I, you know, remember I, I brought it up that why can't we put all this on one big approval? And is that possible? You could organize the agenda to take them as a single item, but they have to be listed individually because they're individual agreements. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none advice. I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, item 13.32, approval of file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Sage Hall project 17-031 for Inland Building Construction Companies Incorporated with Measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 13.33. Approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Sage Hall Project 17-031 for Perfection Glass Incorporated with Measure AV funds. Is there a motion? So moved. Okay, second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 13.34, approval to file notice of completion and resolution of acceptance on the Sage Hall Project 17-031 for Santa Clarita Concrete with Measure AV funds. Is there a motion? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Hearing none advice? I approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll move along to item 14.1, Academic Senate. Ben Ryder. Good evening, members of the Board of Trustees, President Knudsen, and guests. This evening, I would like to express the Senate's appreciation for the campus support and attendance at last week's Honors Convocation. This opportunity allowed us to celebrate the student commitment to excellence as 48 subject awards were presented to exemplary student scholars. I would also like to take the opportunity to invite the members of the Board of Trustees, Administration, and Campus Community to attend the Faculty Recognition Day being held on April 21st. We will honor this year's selections for scholar in residence and outstanding adjunct, retirees, new and most recent hires, and those who have impacted our campus for many years. Please join us for the recognition ceremony at four o'clock and then music, games, and food at follow, to be followed at 5.30. Finally, last week I attended and represented Antelope Valley College at the Spring Plenary for the Academic Senate for California Community Colleges, affectionately known as the ASCCC. Held each semester, representatives from the 115 colleges meet to receive updates and training from the system's faculty leadership and to ratify resolutions that formalize positions, opinions, and support for a multitude of issues that are related to diversity and equity, legislative issues, consultation with the chancellor's office, curriculum, the disciplines list, and other general concerns. This brings theme was strengthening teaching, leading, and learning through racial justice and academic freedom. Each presentation and breakout session connected to inclusion, diversity, equity, anti-racism, and accessibility. The plenary provided overviews and strategies for improving student support, culturally responsive teaching, enrollment management, transfer, implementation and adjustment to current legislation, the development of open e Educational Resources, or OER, and Zero Textbook Cost Courses and Degrees, Best Practices in Online Education, <clears throat> online education and Instruction, the Creation of Ethnic Studies Courses and Disciplines, and Evaluating Hiring Processes. For the Board's reference and review, I will include the link to the Springs Plenary Program and Resolutions as part of the documentation on this brief report. I invite, invite members of the Board of Trustees to examine this and other plenary programs and resolutions to provide a broad overview 
of the faculty purview, experience, and position on crucial matters. Such a review can provide another dimension of understanding as the board considers future priorities, goals, directions, and vision for this campus and for the district. I also invite the board to reach out to the Senate with any inquiries or the faculty. I feel that as the Board of Trustees, the administration and the Academic Senate share in an open exchange of ideas and discussion of issues facing AVC and the system as a whole, we can work collaboratively to move AVC forward. Thank you. Fans, where is the uh, faculty recognition going to be at? That will be oh, Fine Arts Club. Fine Arts Club? Thank I have a flyer in my head. <laughs> Thank you. Elm Valley College Federation of Teachers, Dr. Bird. Good evening again. Thank you very much for the extra time during item uh, 13.2. I very much appreciate your willingness to listen to my presentation and clarify the information before proceeding. I appreciate that. Thank you again. Ms. Ford and I would like to introduce Mr. Arian Johnson from CFT. Hello there. Our longtime field reps, Ms. Martha Figueroa and Ms. Cassie Harris have been reassigned and we are delighted to have Mr. Johnson joining us. So welcome to him. I and other faculty are concerned about the situation that occurred on April 6th, 2022. Employees received an email from President Knudsen at 11.55 a.m. on April 6th, stating that earlier this morning, we received notice of a possible threat to campus. We have been working with the LA County Sheriff's Department, both here on campus and in the community. The Sheriff Department has run their investigation and has determined that the threat to campus is not credible. I do appreciate the administration and the LA County Sheriff Department assessing the threat, but it's disturbing to realize that for several hours while they were assessing the threat, most of the campus community had no idea that a threat even existed. Why were we not directed to shelter in place during the assessment? Faculty and staff in offices could have chosen to lock office doors. Students in classes with a remote option could have chosen to attend remotely. Instead, by being told of the threat only after it passed, hundreds of students, faculty, and staff were oblivious to any threat and given no opportunity to try to reduce risk to themselves and others. I do understand that the administration doesn't wanna cause panic on campus, but if there has been a threat to the campus, personal safety is more important than just carrying on with instruction as usual. Pretending a threat doesn't exist, doesn't make it disappear. It just means that if the threat had been credible, we all would have been caught flat-footed, possibly literally out in the open with no ability to prepare to keep ourselves safe. This college has the ability to send rave mobile alerts to our phones and the ability to send emails to the entire campus and to take over campus computer screens with urgent messages. I urge the board to investigate this situation and ensure that faculty, staff, and students are notified more speedily of possible threats. Speaking of the pandemic, the Federation members are all very excited that it seems to be ebbing, um, except for the apparently, hopefully, slight uptick likely related to the new variant. We are a bit perplexed, however, about the recommendation at board meetings for social distancing and the suggestion that speakers only stay to provide their comment. This seems inconsistent with the requirements elsewhere on campus and like a double standard meant to protect board members, but maybe not rank and file members of this community. I hope this is just an oversight and not, in, not intentional. I continue to hear from faculty who still have serious COVID related concerns. For instance, a faculty member brought forward how several of their students, I'm nearly done, received official AVC quarantine notices with the wrong student's name at the top. I hope AVC is aware of these serious issues and is planning to fix them as soon as possible. Thank you and good evening. Ms. Ford. Good evening and welcome, Arian. Um, I um, 
wanted to express the same concerns that Aurora Express Classified sent me emails concerning that there's, they felt their safety was placed at risk due to the fact that they weren't asked to shelter in place. And I did send an email to Mr. Knudsen asking him about it and whether or not he wanted to say something to the campus about it. So I didn't think it was our place to say anything. I sort of got a clipped response, so that's why we're here tonight. I would also like to ask that you provide me or us with guidance as to the process for getting responses to the many concerns that we have brought forward to you over the months concerning violations of policies and procedures. We talk to you, you look, and then you say nothing. I have learned that, um, well, first of all, I have a question about the Leadership Academy. I've learned that as a part of the presentations, there has been denigrating of the unions and implications that we are providing inaccurate information and are acting inappropriately. I was of the impression that this committee was to grow individuals into management. Good managers know how unions operate, that they promote good and safe working conditions for all employees. If unions are being discussed, why aren't they included in the conversation so that people hear both sides of the story? You'll note that uh, we're not silent when we're not pleased with something. We're here in front of you talking openly. We don't throw the rock and hide our hands. Now, I understand there's gonna be a trip for this group, the Learning Academy to Big Bear. And it's to include current and past participants of this committee, which include faculty, staff, students, and administrators and their significant others. So I'm just curious, is there a budget for this committee? If there are funds for this committee, are the funds from the general fund? What, is, what process is followed to approve these funds for this committee? Will rooming and transportation be covered for attendees? And will there be per di or will there be per diem? I looked on the travel budget, as a matter of fact, all the way back to January, and I see no addressing of travel for this function. This event seems to be occurring in May before the next board meeting. And I just wanna make clear that if the funding stream for this leadership committee is paid out of any ounce of district funds, there should be an accounting of those funds as this is the people's money, not an individual. Ms. Ford, could you please wrap it up? So please provide an accounting of these funds at the next board meeting. And I will close with this thought. When Dr. Fisher was president, those of you who recall him, anyone who went on travel and was paid by the district, there was an accounting and individuals had to report out on such trips. This was required by the Board of Trustees. Why is there no longer such an accounting with fiscal independence? One would think there would be a greater accounting required. Thank you. Okay. Moving along, item 14.4, Michelle Hernandez. No report. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Associated students, Mr. Peoples. Good evening, everybody. Um, in terms of my report, uh, three events uh, since the last time I've been here have taken place. The most recent was the leadership luncheon where at least 50 student leaders were recognized. Uh, several faculty or advisors, I would have to say, were recognized as well. Uh, towards the end, we did also recognize the next ASO president and next um, student trustee. Uh, the there were some hiccups since it's, a, since it's been an event that has been held on Zoom recently, and it's been a while since we've been in person. Uh, somebody was injured. Uh, there were a few uh, other hiccups with uh, getting things done at the time, but everything was figured out. Uh, the next event was our 
SSCCC conference. We did fly to Sacramento. It was a great time. Every student leader that went there loved it. It was great to see other student leaders in person to get ideas from them, to talk to them. Uh, even the uh, uh, the words, uh, I'm forgetting the words, even the um, workshops that we all attended were great. Uh, there are some really influential people that made an impact on us and all of us feel that we now have all these ideas, but we only have two meetings, unfortunately, to implement them. Uh, our next event was, was a special meeting where we went over the resolutions and how we would vote at SSCCC. Uh, many of the votes that took place did go in our favor. Some of them did not go in our favor. Uh, I did refer a resolution to the Board of Governors for SSCCC. Uh, the best way to explain it would be like law scholars, but for pre-med students. So think of law scholars and their program, how it helps uh, uh, pre-law students get to law school, but for pre-med students, I did refer that to the board, uh, their board. And our next meeting is April 15th, where we will be going over all the resolutions that we voted on at SSCCC and many of the things that we learned at. I hope to see uh, the board there if you can make it. Thank you. Thank you for the report. Ms. Knippel is not here, so we'll move to the Office of Superintendent President, Mr. Ed Knudsen. I have a very short report. I first want to, as we come into the end of the academic year, I want to congratulate Rocio and, and Nishim for your good work with the students throughout this year. I know it was a tough year for y'all, and, and I'm very pleased that you stood up and took the responsibility. And, and as you move on to the next stage of your your lives, please remember that uh, you always have a home here at ABC, and if you need something, you have but to ask. So congratulations on the good work that you've done on behalf of that. I do want to clarify one thing. People were talking about it, asking people to, to stay only to provide their comment. It does, the sentence does finish with, unless space is available. The purpose is to try to keep if there are a lot of people with comments that they have the opportunity to do so, that's why we have the chair spaced out. If space is available, you're always welcome to stay. Okay. Student trust, go see. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mr. Kenson. Very much appreciated. Um, I am, well, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all the students who are recognized and faculty at the leadership luncheon and the honors convocation this past weekend. And I'm also looking forward to graduation and commencement and seeing all the students there who are taking the next step in their lives. That will be a great event in a few weeks. Um, I was also very grateful to be able to attend the SSCCC conference with ASO. It was a great event. I got to meet other student trustees, learn from them, and learn more about civic engagement. And that those are lessons I'll take with me as I graduate. I would also like to congratulate Mr. Johnson as you join ABC. We're glad to have you here. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their evening. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Mr. Reeves? Yes, I want to congratulate our student trustees for your service. You've done a really good job. We appreciate it. And I want to wish everybody a great holiday, whatever religion you are, or whatever you're celebrating. But we have a lot of celebrating this, this week. So have a good time. Thank you. OK, Ms. Harvey. Yes, I'd like to wish everyone a safe and a happy holiday. Uh, please be careful out there. The second thing is I want to uh, comment on is questioning by the board. Um, when I first decided to run for office, I heard that a lot as I met with constituencies and different groups about questions that are asked. Um, one thing I have come to find as a trustee here at the college is that there are rules. And one of those rules is that a week in advance, we receive all of the items for the meeting. During that time, we can review those items. There are questions about numbers, presentation. It's our opportunity to say, President Knudsen, we believe that this is something that the public should be even more aware of. Could you please have the vice president of 
whatever the area is to come up and comment for the public's sake, because we've already read the material. So I'm not gonna sit up here and ask questions to ask them, um, but I will ask questions to clarify. I'll ask questions that will make uh, what the board does more transparent. Um, and I will ask questions simply to make sure that I, as the trustee for District 1, understand what I'm doing. But uh, it is not my role to sit here and say, what is this and what is that? When I've had it for a week and I know what it is. So I just wanted to say that I, I know that this is an election year. People have all kinds of agendas. But what I have seen in my time here is a group of people who care about the work that they do. Now, with that said, I can only speak for Michelle Harvey. And Michelle Harvey asked questions as I need to, to make sure that I can make the best decision possible for the advancement of this college, teachers, faculty, and students. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. Barbara. Um, <clears throat> good evening. I just want to say to um, our wonderful Rocio. Um, I've had the pleasure of knowing Rocio for many, many years. I've watched her grow up. And uh, I have to say, I'm so very, very proud of the young lady and your, uh, your ac academic and, and not only your academic abilities, Rocio, but your, your um, ability to collaborate and communicate. Uh, you, you make me so proud. And I wish you the very best as you move on and hope you get that college of your choice. I'm rooting for a special one, but we'll leave that alone for now. I, I, I can't be more proud of any student. So kudos for your outstanding work. And um, I too just wanna sort of um, um, wish everybody a happy Easter and all the faculty and staff and uh, Hope you get a lot of uh, time with your family and if you have grandkids, grandkids as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to say I had a great meeting with Rocio and she provided a lot of insight and a lot of questions for her. And she had a few for me and I think that worked out very well. I always like to try to sit down with students and now that we're more or less away from the COVID uh, crisis uh, as the county presents it. It was good to do that. And I got a chance to talk to some other students. It's always good to engage students. You get a different perspective when you actually talk to students on campus. And sometimes their concerns are not some of the concerns that are heard in this boardroom. But it was good. I had a great tour of the health and science building, particularly the nursing. And uh, there's some pretty amazing patients in the nursing. They do all kinds of things down there. So uh, I'm hoping the board is going to get a full tour of that coming up. That was a great experience. And I thank you for coming tonight. And the next meeting is there's no uh, report of action from continued closed session will be necessary. So we are going to set the meeting May 9th, 2022. And this meeting is adjourned.